Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bonsai, Dr. Bonsai's in the Emporium, and today I've got the second, second part of the uh, unboxing that I'm doing for Crystallum, Conflict in the Far Future. Um, I hope you guys liked that last video, that was kind of an experimental thing for me, uh, but, you know, I hope you liked it. So, what we've got today is basically what would come in the two-player starter set, which you can get from Gaddis Gaming. Uh, all the link, relevant links are going to be in the description. Uh, these miniatures are in white metal, uh, white lead-free uh, pewter miniatures. Um, so the way that's going to work is going forward there, the creator said that he's working with Old Glory miniatures to bring his figures, uh, most of the main line stuff, into uh, white metal. So it's easy available for retail. So if you're not a 3D printer, if you don't have a person in your circle that's a 3D printer, you can get it. Otherwise, you can always just uh, go to Colts 3D. Uh, that link will be in the description as well uh, to get those 3D prints. So first off, look at this. Look at this presentation. Look at that box. So as you can see, you've got a bag of each of the infantry. You've got kind of the big... The big super heavy units right here and you also have these little these little wells for the order dice and as you can see the order dice are nice and shimmery and pretty and um they look they look fantastic so you get five of these you kind of get these this teal teal and blue color for the Federation of Columbia, which is basically like the United States uh, post uh, the Crystallum Apocalypse. And then you have uh, these guys, which is the, uh, I think they're just called the Vlost, which so it's like a, like a neo, neo-feudal uh, Russian Federation type thing with a czar or a czarina, I think it is. So there's that, and then you have these, which are uh, markers, uh, objective markers, a uh, little uh, piece of paper there that you peel off the back, um, but you get one, two, three, four, five, you get two, four, six, you get six of these. So these are great because they uh, are just they're just great objective markers. You can use them not only for crystalline, but for pretty much anything. So, hmm, let's, let's tackle the big boys first. So you get the super heavy tank, which is, now keep in mind, this is 15 millimeter scale. Uh, this game is 15 mil scale. It is miniature, it is miniature agnostic. So if you don't want to use these miniatures, you don't have to. Um, you can also play this in six millimeter quite effectively. Um, so as you can see, you have, you know, these two big turrets. So you've got this and it's got the big, huge rail gun thing going on for it. Yeah, let me each try to eliminate some of the shadows. There we go. So you get this big, huge rail gun. You get another gun. You get this. Did have an extended barrel on it, but um, blame me, not the manufacturer. Uh, I broke it, and I cannot find it for the life of me. So uh, blame that on me, not the manufacturer. So because I'm ham-handed, and then you get this really nice deep track detail, and you get this cool huge sci-fi tank. A lot of this stuff reminds me of um, Command and Conquer, um, like Tiberium Wars type thing, in which I don't know if that's intentional or if that's just you know like oh you got you got um, you got classic sci-fi. Uh, sci-fi RTS in my tabletop game. And then you have this thing, which is, I believe it's called the God Hammer. It's basically a giant artillery piece. So as you can see, it's it's giant, like Gauss rifle artillery piece. And you can swivel it. And this is friction, by the way. This is friction. So if you want to, if you do want to lock it in place, you can just, you know, uh, shoot some super glue into that joint and you'll have a nice and rigid or if you don't want to you don't have to because it sits nice and and then of course you get this and as you can see it rotates nice and freely this gun right here this kind of this point defense anti-infantry gun is kind of separate so you kind of you're able 
and like spin it around. And then you get the, the tracks. So you're gonna wanna have, with most, with most modern stuff, you're gonna wanna have the, have the uh, drive sprocket facing towards the rear. Now these ones are a little bit warped, but this is nothing that a little hot water can't fix. So you can kind of see how they warp, but they just flex right back. So heat them up a little bit of hot water, and you're good to go. So those are your two, I can show these off a little bit better. So that's your super heavy, uh, that, and that's your super heavy, uh, Gauss artillery slug thrower thing. So we're gonna put these in the back of the box so we can make room for the infantry because this is a game, even though it has a lot of tanks, it does feature a lot of infantry. Um, the infantry are, again, white metal, fairly simple sculpts because of the limitations of the material. Well, not the limitations of the material. It's because it's smaller manufacturer, and this is a smaller, smaller guy. It's literally a one-man band, so um, I am going to be evaluating the sculpts and whatnot on that basis. So here you have, I believe, yes, these are, I believe, the Vlost uh, guys. So you get... Basically, you get one, one, two, three, four, five, six of these bases, which are, it says 32 millimeter uh, MDF bases. You get a bunch of infantry. Basically, you will put, you'll end up putting three infantry on a base like this. And that's your that's how you kind of manage your your infantry so there's a few different poses in here some of them are unique and they have unique weapons so this guy right here is your basic uh kind of rifleman Ooh, there we go it's kind of your basic rifleman figure it's a big sci-fi gun and then you have another guy with uh what's basically a squad automatic weapon Oh, yeah, there's a secondary sculpt. And then you have this guy who's basically got like a, like an RPG sculpted on his back. So if you're like, oh, I want my, I want my unit, my infantry unit to have, you know, a saw gunner and an RPG upgrade. So that's how you would, that's how you would manage that. Is you would just put the guy with the RPG, you put the guy with the this and, and the regular gun on there, and that's that's your that's your squad. Because this is, a, again, kind of a squad-based or a, a company-based, uh, company-level, excuse me, uh, experience, you have, you know, you kind of, that's how that's, how that works. So you have, I'm going to try to sort these out by what they actually are. Ba, 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 ba. So you got one, two, three, okay, there's that, there's these little fellas. Uh, and also, when I did get these guys, uh, a couple of them were kind of folded over at the ankle. And all I did was I just gently bent them back into place, and, which is which is something you couldn't do with metal. Or, I'm sorry, is something you can't really do with resin. Uh, you can't really do with plastic either, for that matter. So that's kind of an important thing. So it looks like you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You get nine regular guys. You get one, two, three, four, five uh five uh guys with rpgs and then you get one two three four you get uh or i'm sorry you get two guys with these kind of longer saw squad automatic type weapons and you get these ones with 
And I am going to be slightly critical of these because it looks like the barrels didn't fill in all the way on the mold. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. I believe they're supposed to be some sort of sniper weapon. But at the same time, you have enough figures where it's like, okay, boop. A guy with saw. Boop. I'll try to get it. I'm going to drop this real quick here. There we go. So you get, you know, guy with rocket, guy with saw, guy with a rocket, and they're kind of rocket, rocket man, and then you can kind of fill it in this way, so you can kind of have have these guys isolated off to these off to the side so that's that's how that looks so you get you know you get uh two bags of these guys so you get a total of um three six nine twelve fifteen so eighteen so th 32 32 if i'm doing that math right um out of the floss figures with uh with a total of 12 uh mdf 32 millimeter bases Drop those guys right there. And again, just look at this. Look at the storage solution that they've come up with. Isn't that amazing? And the little wells for the dice, which I'm sure you could put like more bespoke individual figures to represent like a commander or something. So, and these guys are the, I want to say the Federation of Columbia. So you get two bags of these guys, and again you get six of these bases, and the guns on these guys are slightly more robust, so they don't actually, here I'm going to drop this even further, drop this even further. A better idea of what these look like. So, these guys are all again more or less the similarly equipped. This is actually one of the ones with uh, so I don't know, actually, Ooh. there you go. There's that, and there is something to be said for working some uh, with miniatures in metal. Uh, there's something. There's something pleasant about handling metal miniatures. I know there's a lot of newer game war gamers uh, that will disagree with me, but I I I grew up when war gaming really was still like an absolutely niche. It was a niche of a niche of a niche hobby, where you know if you were you were lucky to get miniatures full stop in long term, as opposed to. Um, Having the oh, oh these miniatures are metal, and then you kind of get this you kind of got this phase where people are like, oh those miniatures are still metal. Ugh. You just turn your nose up at them. And the the way this game works is that hey man, look if you ain't about the metal miniatures, that's fine. That's totally cool. You know why? Because there's a 3D print avenue for that, which is going to give you that uh, that resin that resin you know. Uh, experience but at the same time you like you gotta you gotta have a computer you gotta have a 3d printer you gotta have this you gotta have that you gotta have you gotta have all this all this ancillary crap to go along with it or people think just think to themselves oh just 3d print it's like okay so 3d printers what 300 bucks 200 bucks these days for a good pla one and then you get you gotta buy a thousand dollar or five hundred dollar computer depending on if you build it or buy it stock I don't know, there's people raging in the comments like, oh, it's expensive, it's just whatever. But metal miniatures, they look great. So uh, these guys look great. Uh, they're very, they have very, very much a sci-fi angular kind of look about them. Um, again, you kind of have your standard riflemen and you have uh, kind of these guys with the larger, more heavy duty barrel stuff. So that's 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So again, uh, same, same count and 
count and cluster as the other guys. And you do get two of these bags, um, two bags of identical figures in that box. So, and along with uh, the six uh, the six MDF bases, which are 32 more. So there's that. There's that. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So there's that. And then close this up. And these are... Ah! So these are what uh, the last um, uh, T seventy two T seventy two Rs I think, which is basically I think that means T seventy two railgun. I got this little scatter dice. I was reading the rules and I was not able to figure out the reason why. I believe this goes to the big uh, God Hammer artillery piece. That would make more sense. So I'm just going to throw them in there. But I don't think it actually belongs with uh, with these guys. I might be wrong. You need to uh, probably take a second crack look at the windows. So you have this. It is, and again, if you don't like the white metal, because these things these things are pretty pretty hefty. These guys are pretty hefty. Um, you can kind of see some of the print lines from the mold, which is funny because because. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Iron Wind Metals and uh, Catalyst have been having that same problem, so, uh, and they're way, way bigger than this, uh, than uh, Old Glory Miniatures and um, and uh, the guy that's running Crystallum, so I think the guy that's running Crystallum has probably got a leg up on him, but uh, nice, heavy, fully filled in, fully filled in, that makes a huge weight difference, and then you have the side skirts here, again, it's modern tank, so this goes back in the sprocket. So you kind of line that up, and that's more or less how that looks. And then you can, the, the fenders are thin enough, and again, this is metal where you can get away with kind of torquing and bending them to, to make them look like actual, like, sheet metal fenders. That's kind of the, uh, an advantage of this material. And then you have the big turret here with the huge, with the huge honking mail slot rail gun. Um... Nice and nice and sturdy. This barrel does not feel flimsy at all. Uh, I feel okay doing that because it just doesn't go any place. Um, and definitely reminiscent of a T72. And again, if you if you're turned off by these miniatures, uh, it is miniature agnostic, which I love. Uh, so if you've got a Team Yankee army and you want to you want to try a really good rule set, because let's face it, this is a really good rule set. Oh, here we go. Look at that. No blue or nothing. Just kind, of, <laughs> just kind of sits there. So if you want to try a really good rule set um, that's uh, nice and reactive and uh, has a sci-fi spin to it and you can kind of diesel or conquer like uh, um, you know, man and conquer up your uh, your forces or if you want to make mock up and 3D print something, you can do that. This is totally fine. Because uh, this game is a really open, kind of creative uh, play space for people. Um, and then we also have, for the Federation, we have the Detroit APCs. A lot of, lot, of, lot of Michigan stuff going on in here uh, in this game, uh, specifically because this uh, manufacturer is based in Michigan here. So you have the actual thing, which is like an MRAP on steroids. And then you have uh, six individual wheels, which I actually can fit. Boop, there we go. So, and they actually, they actually stay of their own accord pretty much. So, um, so there's that. And um, you get a little turret with like a intake personnel gun. So you have something to bite back against people so you can run up drop your drop your guys off and uh support them with effective fire so and you get three of these in this uh kind of the starter bundle so um the only thing that's not displayed here which is something uh i don't believe i addressed in the first video on crystalline is a rule book there is a physical rule book with uh with these uh miniatures um uh 
with the starter box uh, as I uh, as it's constructed and, and was uh, provided. Uh, I was given an, a PDF copy of that book. Uh, I didn't have the uh, the manufacturer didn't have the uh, didn't have the uh, look everything's shaking. There we go. Didn't have a, a physical copy of it at that time. But so. That is the Kristallum two-player starter set. Again, uh, great creator, great local company that's uh, providing the uh, merchandising support for him. Um, really, really happy uh, with these miniatures. They're chunky, they're simple. Uh, I've seen painted examples. They paint up really nice. Um, um, really happy to be able to get um, get this and uh, support a, a creator here especially in michigan southeast michigan because there's not a lot a lot of good stuff happening in michigan these days so the fact that i'm able to interact with uh really brilliant people and really brilliant designers and really dedicated um um guys like the creator like chris the creator of uh of um uh, Chris Dahlum, I'm I count myself really fortunate, and I hope you guys uh, take a look in the description below. Uh, take a look for yourself. Um, even if you go on uh, War Games Vault uh, and buy the rules for PDF for ten bucks, that's you know that would just be amazing uh, and support this guy a lot. Uh, and again, he has a Cults 3D, so if you're not into the white metal, that's fine. Not for everybody. You can uh, 3D print your own stuff, or you can kind of make your own. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys for uh, let me share, uh, have your eyeballs for a little bit. You guys have a great day.